Hagfish slime, which is secreted as a defense mechanism by the hagfish, has proven to be a material worthy of engineering replication. The slime contains certain fibers with remarkable structural qualities and properties, which may warrant its use in the military in the form of bulletproof clothing. These fibers are recognized to have similar properties to Kevlar, a synthetic fiber currently used in bulletproof vests, but in many ways proves to be the superior of the two. Kevlar is a material used for a wide variety of applications from the enhancement of rubber tires to fire safety and other body armor gear. However, the material does have some fairly significant sites of downfall with its integration in bulletproof and other protective clothing. Because bulletproof vests are essentially a construction of intertwining Kevlar fibers, the impact of a bullet can cause internal bleeding as the material does not absorb much of the impact. Kevlar also fails to maintain its resistance to bullet penetration when soaked in water. When water penetrates the cloth of a bulletproof vest, this causes the Kevlar fibers to slip against one another, making it easier for a bullet to travel deeper inside the material. Hagfish slime consists of a protein thread and mucin. Researchers hope to reproduce only the thread component of the slime for protective clothing, so the clear mucin shown in the picture won't be used. The thread is coiled together within the body of the hagfish. The fibers extracted from hagfish slime share many of the mechanical properties also exhibited in Kevlar. The thread component of the slime ranges from 1 to 3 micrometers, which is approximately 100 times thinner than any human hair. Once unraveled, this thread can be 15 centimeters long. These threads are composed of densely packed intermediate filaments. A stress strain curve is a way of visualizing the mechanical properties of a material. Here is the typical shape of a stress strain curve. There is a linear portion on the left hand side, an arc in the middle, and an X at the end of the arc. The slope of the linear portion correlates with the stiffness of the material. In other words, the steeper the line, the more force it takes to deform the material. The X on the end of the arc is the fracture point. The length of the arc correlates with how much the material can stretch before breaking. The point where the linear portion of the graph intersects with the arc is the yield strength. This is the amount of force the material can withstand before it deforming permanently. This is a stress strain curve for several different hagfish slime threads. As we go from left to right, we can see that there are draw process threads, dry threads, and wet threads. Here is a stress strain curve for Kevlar. Note that it is in centinewtons per decitex instead of megapascals. If we superimpose the hagfish slime thread curve onto this graph, it looks like this. The stiffness and yield strength of the stretched hagfish fiber is comparable to that of Kevlar-29, a material used commonly in ballistics. The draw process threads are threads that were stretched until the threads deformed permanently, similar to how a spring is stretched until it is no longer its original shape. When the hagfish fibers are stretched, they become stronger, indicated by a higher yield strength, and stiffer, indicated by a steeper elastic modulus. When stretched, the hagfish slime fibers have a stiffness very comparable to that of Kevlar. However, in contrast to the strength-oriented Kevlar fibers, the virgin or unstretched fibers from hagfish slime rely heavily on their elastic properties. Initially, the thread is made up of alpha coils that are wrapped in a tightly wound spiral shape. In order to make the thread stronger, researchers stretch them. The alpha coils slowly change into beta crystal structure as these threads are stretched. The beta crystal structure of the thread is made up of strands that are folded into layers. Between each layer of thread, hydrogen bonds form to create a sort of crystalline structure. This structure helps maintain a high yield strength. Through recent experimentation, scientists were able to successfully create a material that mimics the properties of hagfish fibers. Researchers produced the two main components of the fiber, the protein thread and the mucin. The DNA of the hagfish slime is incorporated into E. coli bacteria. The modified E. coli is grown in separate petri dishes in which it produces the proteins. Each protein is then extracted using processes of isolation and purification and are further combined using a centrifuge. The recreation was verified comparing the natural and synthetic threads under an electron microscope, proving the structures were almost identical. 
A benefit of the hackfish lime recreation is that it does not require any special equipment to produce. Further research is being conducted in order to enhance the material stability in a variety of environments. Through further experimentation with the synthetic fibers, researchers could determine which ratio of strength to elasticity would be most favorable and plastically deform the fibers to increase the strength while still maintaining some of the elasticity. While strength is certainly essential to stopping a racing bullet, one could also see the need for elasticity in catching and slowing a bullet as it enters the vest to lessen the impact by displacing the kinetic energy over an area, which as mentioned earlier was a glaring weakness of Kevlar. Because both properties are essential to maintaining the bulletproof integrity of a vest and absorbing the impact of a bullet, the creation of a composite material consisting of the Kevlar and hagfish fibers intertwined together would likely yield a more desired result compared to either fiber working alone. By stretching and drying the synthetically produced strands, the structure of the strands changes to beta coils, thus increasing the yield strength to between 600 and 900 megapascals. These methods of processing used to capitalize on the unique structure of the fibers, along with the versatile properties of the fibers, make it an ideal asset for a composite material that could be integrated into bulletproof clothing.